This is Abe Friedtanzer from CinemaDailyUS.com, and I'm thrilled to be talking with Sean Walker, whose visual effects work earned him an Oscar nomination for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. How are you doing today, Sean? I'm excellent. Thank you, Abe. Yeah, very good. Great, great. Abe, congratulations on your Oscar nomination. Thank you. Very exciting. Yep, my first one, so it's pretty cool. That's great. That's great. What? How did you get involved with, with uh, Shang-Chi? I know you've done a lot with, uh, with Marvel before this. I have. So I've personally been involved with um, pretty much, aside from Eternals now, pretty much every uh, Marvel movie that Wed has worked on. And um, yeah, we've worked with, uh, so Chris Townsend is, uh, was Marvel's overall visual effects supervisor for the show. And uh, we've worked with him a couple of times before. And um, yeah, it, uh, it all kind of lined up well. We had a meeting. He came over to, uh, to New Zealand, which is where we're based, uh, December 2019. And uh, yeah, we, we hit it off, and ever since then, we've uh, pretty much been uh, working on it all the way up until the uh, release. That's great. And Shang-Chi obviously has a lot of interesting creatures, unlike some of the other Marvel stuff. Like, it's not just science fiction. There's sort of this more, like, mythical element to it, which is really interesting. What intrigued you most about that? Oh, yes, this is, that's exactly it. So uh, the very first thing I saw was um, some fantastic artwork from Marvel uh, depicting the dragon coming out of the lake. And uh, and some of its powers as it's flying across the uh, as as it's flying across the village and yeah it's a uh, it's 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 a sort of fantastical uh, theme which we haven't really seen before a mythical theme that we haven't seen uh, too much before in Marvel films and yeah it was just uh, when we were looking at it just thinking this is everything that that a CG artist really wants to work on you know it's got uh, huge uh, uh, CG beasts uh, kung fu uh massive effects yeah it's a it's pretty much a, a, a visual effects dream and how much of that basis is connected to the comics um we went back to the comics every once in a while so kevin feige was uh was pretty keen to make sure we never lost sight of what was originally in the comics so we would uh occasionally head up um certainly some of the color schemes uh when it came to the rings and um uh uh, that's pretty much it, really. We just wanted to make sure that uh, every once in a while we would, we would head back to make sure that we didn't deviate too much from from the comics art. But uh, for the most part, it was it was its own unique thing. I think the original Chang Chi comics were uh, born of their age, so we didn't want to stick too close to it. But yeah, it was. Um, we wanted to make sure we we uh, we hit uh, all of those sort of creative um, uh, uh, directions uh, from the original comics. That makes sense. And the Ten Rings seem like they should be simple. Shouldn't be that hard, but obviously it's something you want to have a very distinct look, right? Yeah, uh, it was honestly one of the more, more surprising things. Uh, it's it's uh, They don't really do much on their own. <laughs> they they uh, uh, as geometrically, they're very simple. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're just kind of ornate rings, but we found especially the motion of them to be a little bit more tricky than we were first anticipating. Uh, we were getting, uh, because the martial arts behind the movement of the rings was uh, so precise, uh, we wanted to make sure that we uh, made, made sure that all of that motion uh, felt like an, ex made the rings feel like an extension of that motion. So um, we were talking about, you know, frame by frame, making sure that they were just trailing behind the hands as they were moving. We wanted to make sure that uh, that the flow felt like it was uh, much more natural than just, you know, a physical uh, uh, weapon. Yeah. And I assume that was true for the other mystical weapons that other characters wield too, right? Exactly right. Yes. Yep. Yep. And so you have this whole like entire environment that you're creating with like the lake stir up and the dragon battle, everything. What can, where do you even start with something like that? This one was pretty tricky. Yeah. So the, uh, um, the lake battle, the, the village, the whole thing, we had an entire 27 square kilometer CG replication of um, uh, or digital environment that we had to uh, work in. So it was kind of our digital playground. And uh, it wasn't just us. So we had Rising Sun Pictures were the one with the uh, vendor in charge of looking after the Talo village side. And across the lake, the Mountain of Souls, that was uh, all of Weta's creation. And so we were building these two things at the same time. Uh, and the lake in between, um, and uh, just constantly having to share, uh, you know, files and uh, geometry and textures, and it was 
uh, and then at the same time, making sure that we were bringing everything up in a, uh, to a certain creative level uh, all at the same time with each other. So it was a, it was a massive collaborative effort between um, uh, quite a few vendors actually. I assume that with the scope of other Marvel movies that you've worked on, this is pretty common that you have different teams working on different things? It is, yeah. Gone are the days are where we would uh, have one show dedicated to, uh, one vendor dedicated to one show. So no, we had, uh, I think, around 12 vendors working on, on um, Shang-Chi. Uh, Weta looked after the, uh, the third act battle for the most part. So everything um, from when Shang-Chi gets uh, punched into the water from then onwards uh, so we have a few sort of key keystone vendors that look after uh, a good chunk uh, of the film and then um lots of other little vendors that uh that you know get to sweeten up their little uh, uh their little sequences yeah does that ever create issues because things just don't look or feel the same we have different teams working on them um it doesn't create issues but it is obviously an additional challenge for sure so for example uh we also were uh primary vendors on um some of the assets that were shared across the uh across the board so we uh built the food dogs uh, and then trickster took those uh, all 30 million hairs <laughs> of that groom to into their uh um into their uh, facility and and built their own version of the food dog and uh and and applied it to some of their sequences. The, uh, the main issue there is um, we're all kind of working with our own proprietary software. So uh, it's just a bit of a, a communication to make sure that we're all providing each other the, the necessary tools to be able to actually recreate all of these, these assets. That makes sense. And then, of course, we have the dragons, which are, you know, these large, large creatures. And we've seen a lot of dragons. I feel like a lot of this stuff we haven't necessarily seen in film quite as much like this. But dragons have yeah. been around for a while in, you know, mythology. What yeah. was specific and special about what you wanted these to look like? Well, these ones, well, especially the grand, uh, the great protector dragon was, uh, I feel like, one of the few, at least, uh, uh, Eastern uh, dragons we've seen like uh, an eastern style dragon without any uh, wings it's the i don't know if we've seen too much of that in western cinema so uh, there's been a little bit of it in in um in eastern cinema but not too much so uh uh it's certainly not to the scale i should say so um uh, that was a unique challenge for for us we wanted to make sure that we were uh honorable and respectful to the uh to the mythology and the um and the artwork that came to us and it's the first time we've done a wingless dragon, that's for sure. So we've done a couple of, a few dragons, I should say before, um, but this is the first wingless dragon we had. So we had a few animation challenges, just kind of seeing how we, um, uh, how we approach that. And uh, we did, uh, we looked at a lot of reference, so underwater sea snakes, and uh, because it is a water-based dragon, uh, underwater sea snakes and iguanas, see how they uh, push and, uh, and propel themselves through through uh, the water is kind of the feel that we wanted to go for. Uh, so lots of that sort of strong, energetic um, driving force from uh, from the body through the air is kind of what we were going for. It's really interesting. And does something like that take much longer than, say, a battle between two people with powers to create? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So just the sheer scale of them is uh, is one of the biggest challenges we had. Um, uh, 8,000 hand placed scales just to build that uh, the great protected dragon model and the uh, dweller in darkness, I think was the biggest, uh, like geometrically the largest uh, beast we've ever worked on. So like 128 million polygons, something like that. It was pretty big for, for an individual creature. Sure. And what happens to all that? Can any of it be reused for a sequel or something like that? Yep, yep, absolutely. I think uh, whenever, uh, we start to work whenever we bring these assets into um, either uh, sequels or even just you know different movies. Like we've uh, had Iron Man a few times now. You know we 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 build and improve uh, upon previous um, movies, but at the same time, you know it's great to have a, a head start when, <laughs> when you're doing that kind of thing. Yeah, and I know this is not the only Marvel movie that you worked on last year. You were also very involved in Black Widow, correct? I was, yes, yes. So we had about 460-odd shots in, in uh, Black Widow. Uh, it was between 
uh, it was mostly the gulag escape and uh, everything within Melina's house. Yeah. And the, the CG pigs. <laughs> so that's a lot more sort of action oriented. It feels a lot like the, the bus sequence, which you didn't work on for Shang-Chi, right? It's not as fantasy yeah. involved. Exactly. Much more grounded, much more realistic. Uh, we, um, yeah, uh, Jeff, uh, Bal uh, Jeffrey Bauman was the uh, visual effects advisor on that show. And, uh, we went through quite a few uh, interesting um, uh, cinematographic, cinematographic uh, techniques to, to get that to look right. So a lot of the visual effects shots were filmed spherical, but the, the rest of the show was filmed anamorphic. And so we had all these, uh, we invented all these cool tools to be able to uh, translate those spherical shots into anamorphic shots in the end. And uh, yeah, so that's the kind of grounded realism we were going for there as well. And it's not like you don't try and do that when you're working with uh, fantastical beasts and creatures as well. You always kind of want to ground it somewhere in reality. That way you're not getting pulled out too far. Uh, so like, for example, um, when filming a lot of the, um, the dragon fights, we wanted to make sure that uh, it was filmed as if there was a person there literally uh, either running along the dragon alongside Shang-Chi or if uh, we were uh, dangling from the dragon's tail, looking up at the, the beast. We wanted to make sure that um, everything felt like it was um, physically possible to be filmed, even though you were actually, uh, you know, one and a half kilometers in the sky with a, <laughs> with a couple of fighting um, dragons. No, that's really great. And I think that's an important thing to focus on because you don't want, you don't want the fact that this couldn't necessarily happen in real life to take you out of the experience of believing that this is happening in that moment, right? Exactly, exactly right. Yeah, I think that's where Shang-Chi succeeded in so many aspects. Lots of nice long shots, lots of uh, um, uh, grounded cinematography. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty special, I think, in that way. And in reading about your work, I saw that you were also involved in the uh, famous Avengers Endgame scene that involved all the female superheroes. Yes, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, so I looked after that segment as well. Uh, that was that was excellent. That was tricky uh, because almost all of, oh man, there must have been, uh, especially in that opening shot when they all come together, I think there were about five or six different plates. Uh, you know, it was a little bit of a, it wasn't like a last minute thing, but it came a little bit late in the day. And so um, we had a lot of the uh, um, actresses come in at separate times and film their different takes at different points in time. Uh, so they were interacting with uh, someone who wasn't Tom Holland <laughs> and uh, we had to put Tom, Tom in there and uh, same as um, there were about at least five or six different plates that we had to uh, kind of all combine uh, so that was a tricky one but uh, uh, yeah very very successful in the end I thought it was a pretty exciting part of the movie. Oh absolutely and it seems like we're just going to get more and more Marvel stuff so do you have plans to continue working with Marvel on future projects? Uh, let's just say it's a very good chance yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's you'll, great. You'll see that's, me in this space, I'm sure. <laughs> that's great. Is there anything else that you're working on you've done recently that you'd like to talk about a bit? Um, nothing that I can talk about, sadly. That's the only thing. Yeah, uh, I definitely I have a, a couple of things under my um, under my charge at the moment, and uh, yeah, it's all extraordinarily exciting stuff. I look forward to uh, being able to talk about it. Hopefully, pretty soon. Well, that's wonderful. Well, again, this is it's really really fascinating. I mean, because I, I feel like I've watched these scenes, and I obviously, like many people, have no concept of the work that goes into them and just the, the <laughs> sheer effort. So, thank you for for all of that, and again, congratulations on your Oscar nomination. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate the time. Absolutely. Thanks for talking to me today. <laughs> cool. Catch you later.